Hello everyone. Hello. Welcome back. We are here. <laughs> this is great. We are here. <laughs> <laughs> we are here with part two. two. There were so many questions and we were really enjoying answering them all. Yeah, great questions. So we wanted to do a part two, so let's get into it. We left off with the question, what has been our biggest fight? Dun, dun, dun. A juicy one. Mm. You know, one thing I noticed is couples rarely share specifics of their fights, which I mean, to each their own. Obviously, some degree of privacy is required. Sure. However, I think if you truly have forgiven and moved on from what happened in that, you should be able to share those experiences because they're so helpful. Like this getting into specifics is so helpful for other people. Yeah, it's powerful. So we're going to tell you specifics of our fights for sure. She loves the details. <laughs> yeah. That's another thing. I don't call them fights. I always call it conflict because I feel like a fight insinuates that we're on opposite teams, like fighting against each other. And that's one thing through couples Bible studies is like we are not each other's enemy. We're on the same team. We're on the same team and if there is any spirit of jealousy, insecurity, anger, we know that's not from God. So it's really us fighting that spirit and looking at conflict as spiritual warfare and not fights with my significant other right. has been huge for me so yeah i don't call them fights i call them conflict <laughs> yeah do you remember what they call it in... um they said intentional no intense uh, dis, dis, fellowship yeah yeah <laughs> intense fellowship yeah <laughs> i love that <laughs> yeah so we're going to share some of our intense, intense fellowship. fellowship right first scenario was we were at church and they did an altar call and I had gone up to get prayer and I had intended to walk over to a, a young woman and then I saw this other girl heading towards her. So then in that moment, I just went to a young male for prayer that really hurt Kyle. And it was, that was a moment where I should have asked myself like, would I want Kyle to be receiving prayer from a woman around our age? Would like how would this make Kyle feel and I failed to do that. So when we left, you were very hurt and upset. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think I would be. Mm -hmm. I don't think um, when I look at it from an outside perspective, it's really a big deal. Mm -hmm. But being in it, it was, it was hard to watch. It was hard to like just kind of sit there. A lot of thoughts, a lot of past experiences with exes and you know being cheated on and stuff like that started coming in um, my heart started getting really heavy I started feeling like I was actually getting cheated on mm -hmm. um, you know a question started coming in of well maybe you're not good enough to be praying for her and she doesn't want you praying for her so she needs to go to this guy and have him pray for her like you know and I started asking well why wouldn't she just have me pray for her I do pray for her you know what's the difference between his prayer and my prayer and, and all these thoughts started coming to my head and like the enemy started using them like mm -hmm. big time and they started becoming these lies of like i'm not good enough i don't i'm not leading her well enough um she can't put her faith in me she doesn't trust me she doesn't want me to pray for her so i kind of just shut down to be honest and this wasn't right on my behalf because in that moment instead of partnering with God, I started partnering with these lies. I started partnering with these feelings, these emotions, and that's not who God is. Those are our feelings and emotions. God is much bigger, much different. I took it out on her where I started just getting really upset, really emotional, mm -hmm. and then that led us to a silent car ride <laughs> of, well, not silent. <laughs> A, co a car ride of no conversation because she asked me what was wrong and I was just like nothing and like shut it down. So what we start driving back, she turns the music on, just starts worshiping and like singing. And that frustrated me, frustrated me even more because yeah. now I'm at this point of like, you know, she would, she doesn't, you know, she doesn't care that I'm hurt. And now she's just going to sit here and sing and act like everything's okay. Um, which once again, the enemy was just really just... Yeah, Poor and that's man. like a huge thing to realize is 
if these thoughts because someone also asked like if we have doubts and stuff and so you have to realize that some of these thoughts that come in especially during conflict aren't going to be from god no not because at all. that's when the enemy has the most power he can take advantage of us being hurt because we hear his voice stronger when we're hurt because we're not in alignment with god and right. we're not trying to cling to truth we're trying to cling to that and so that's something to really pay attention to during your conflict with your significant other what thoughts are popping into your head and are those from god in my perspective during all this time I, it was an amazing service. I felt like I got really filled up from the service. So I knew something was wrong and I went to the bathroom and just started praying. And I just asked God to help me through this because I knew I had to stand in the gap here because I knew the enemy was gonna get in your, in your head. And then that's why in the car I put on the music, started worshiping to try to stay in that place. <laughs> really keep shielding myself filling myself up so i could be stronger for the both of us because i knew you were getting attacked mm -hmm. yeah i couldn't surrender the feelings and emotions that i was receiving mm -hmm. so i couldn't talk to her with a clear conscience and a clear mind and a sound mind so we couldn't even have like a conversation on it which is why it turned into intense fellowship right <laughs> i think we got back and you left that's when you went back home and then we met back up yeah i left talked. for a little i was gonna say i left for a little while and then i walked back which is something we learned in a couple's bible study was that it's never okay to walk away from a conversation intentionally with like it being shut like, down i'm done with this i'm out yeah but if it's like super emotional and you then we both need time to like process and pray it's okay to step away and be like okay tonight we're going to talk about this in a little bit right. so i think we had like an hour and a half to ourselves it was funny because i walked back and i was i was walking up she walks out and um that's when we decided that we're going to take a walk and try to figure this yeah. out which is another thing don't go on walks while you're fighting <laughs> yeah it's very easy to walk away from one another walk when you're faster. walking walk faster or slower so eventually, uh, not look at each other <laughs> eventually we're, i was like okay we another another down. thing that someone told us was sit on the same piece of furniture so we got to a bench where neither of us could kind of like create physical distance, distance. between yeah, each other so right. if you guys want us to give you a video of all our the tips and conflict argument tips right i feel like we've learned and i've tried to put into practice a lot of them so right. far so and they've been really helpful and then i mean we came to a resolution when we were on the bench and we were looking at each other and we were talking i had a, it was prayer and was, that's the thing i kept trying right? to initiate started prayer. praying prayer mm -hmm. and i can tell when kyle like when the enemy is trying to take hold of him because kyle resists Praying. I struggle. Yeah, I struggle to pray when I'm not partnering with God. Mm -hmm. And it's like wild because from the outside looking in, you know, you're like, you're not partnering with God. But like in that moment inside looking out, I was like, oh, I am partnering with God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so like stubborn and um, mm -hmm. it's so crazy. It's, I mean, spiritual warfare fair is very real, guys, yeah. you know, and like she was saying in the beginning, like it's not a battle of flesh and blood, but a spirit. And when you're so focused on the flesh, like I was so focused on her and I was mad at her and I was thinking about her, not God. But if I was focused on him, we could have came together to fight that spirit, mm -hmm. right? But yeah. I was just not partnering with him and I was deceived to believe that I was in that moment. So when she told me I wasn't, that got me even more mad at her. <laughs> <laughs> and intense fellowship so just lovely. grew. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. <laughs> but it's also very hard to call somebody out and be like, you're not on my side right now. Like the enemy is lying to you. Like those, those things are hard to say. They're very bold things to say when you're in the middle of something and someone's angry with you. But one thing you can do is initiate prayer. <laughs> and even though Kyle would get stubborn, I would just be like, we need to pray because I knew if Kyle spoke out loud to God, you can't be like partnering with the enemy and praying at the same time. Right. So that was like my spiritual weapon was like, get Kyle into prayer. Yeah, oh, it's powerful, you know? man. It's good. So then we started praying and then finally started 
opening up a little more, put a timer on, and then put a timer on. Because in a previous argument, Kyle became very frustrated with how long things were taking, feeling like we were repeating things, go going over the same things over and over again, yeah. not not getting anywhere. Not getting anywhere. Like. So what we discussed was okay. We'll put a 20 minute timer on and if we don't feel like we and then that'll be a checkpoint for us right. have we gotten any closer to this have we gotten to closer to resolution so for this instant i put a 20 minute timer on that's a little bit harder for you is to flip that switch yes. of like love back on it takes me more time to just be like oh i'm sorry i forgive you okay we're good <laughs> yeah. it's like okay i'm sorry <laughs> Like I am, and I do, I forgive, forgive you. you, but like I need a little bit of time here. <laughs> like yeah. I need <laughs> to, I need to take some time for myself with God to get back into the right state of mind. Yeah, whereas, um, whereas you when just... I hear, <laughs> I'm sorry and I forgive you, like I expect you to be all over me, kissing me again, hugging me and like relaxed and back to your normal self. Like right. when I hear those words, that's what I expect. So when he's still a little bit cold to me, I don't feel like I have been truly like forgiven. Yeah. So uh, you get frustrated with me. Yeah, like, well, I don't I'm like, feel like you love me. Jeez. And I'm like, I have, I do. I just need time. <laughs> yeah. So that's so, something we'll both get better at. Yeah, I'll get more 100%. understanding. And, like, and I want to get more, just flip the switch. Yeah. You know, of course I do. Yeah. You know, it's something that. This is how God is starting to refine us and help us come together as one mm -hmm. and, um, you know, giving us that, um, that new life in a way of, um, that like never ending love unconditionally and just like transforming into more like Jesus. Mm -hmm. When we do pray during conflict, I always try to pray and thank God during it for what he's doing and what he's going to use this particular conflict for mm -hmm. how we can use it in the future to help others so i always thank him in the midst of it because i know it, it's going to make us stronger it's going to help us better understand each other we're going to be able to share it with people like you guys so you guys can navigate conflict and learn from our mistakes because a lot of times you can be in the middle of conflict and be super frustrated that you're there right but really it's within these conflicts over the past like a month or two that have gotten our relationship a lot stronger Much. and although it's frustrating to be in it if you're in it and can still thank god for it and realize that it's going to be used in the future it makes the conflict a lot worth it like you know what you're fighting for yeah and i mean every pain and problem has purpose God uses it all. He's our redeemer. Mm -hmm. So you can't look at it and be like, you know, this is just terrible, you know, because then it is, it's just terrible. Mm -hmm. But if you see it more from God's perspective, you're like, all right, this kind of really sucks right now, <laughs> but God's going to use this and he's going to grow us through this. And it helps you to overcome these things uh, a lot easier, a lot quicker. And, um, just to keep them from becoming like detrimental. Mm -hmm. And I think just with this one, you know, something that really helped at the end too was um, we started talking about, okay, like what could have we done differently? Mm -hmm. And going back and reflecting on like, okay, where can we both improve? Right, you know, and like talking about, okay, well then also like with the praying, like what makes you comfortable? What makes you uncomfortable? Like would it make you uncomfortable if, you know, I went and prayed and had some other girl praying for me or I was praying for these other women? you know and like re-establishing you know, like those boundaries, boundaries in this way right so if we can prevent it from happening again the mm -hmm. same situation from happening again right. but then also going through during the conflict what was what went wrong right and what we can do better in right. both instances yeah. yeah so reflection is huge too mm -hmm. you know really going back and getting on the same page with it all mm -hmm. yeah um, I think this whole video is just going to be about conflict, so we might as well share the other one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, we could keep going on yeah. this for sure. I think with this one, I was expressing to her the thoughts that were going through my head because, um, you know, things were getting shaky with business and finances. And for me, that's always been like kind of a stronghold on my life is finances. And it was in a way of not like complaining or frustration, more so in a way of just like processing. processing. Why is this not happening the way that I feel like it should be happening? 
and I was breaking it down to like, well, the only explanation I could come up with is that God doesn't want it to happen. You know, he's, he's holding, holding me back from it for some reason, probably to protect me, I don't know. I started kind of just processing that and like I was talking about other people in the company and how are they doing what I'm doing and getting the results they're getting. And um, she brought up, well, maybe are you comparing yourself to them? That question. It's like, well, are you just comparing yourself? And that kind of got me frustrated because I was kind of speaking to just process and I guess looking for her to understand and just kind of back me and support me on it. Mm -hmm. Not so much to get like Solution questioned or solutions or... for it because I didn't feel like I was looking for a solution. I was just You didn't want me to help processing. you process deeper at all or like question what you're saying. You yeah. just wanted me to be like, oh, okay. Be like, yeah, okay, I can see that. Maybe yeah. that is it. That is when the enemy enters. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, I speak too much. Yeah, like I just shouldn't. I shouldn't talk that. I just started to talk it out. And I'm just like, come on, kid. And that's just how it felt. Once mm -hmm. again, emotions, right? Mm -hmm. It's like emotions aren't really our friend. <laughs> okay, they're not. Like our emotions are a very powerful tool that the enemy can use to deceive us and make us believe and think things that aren't from God. Mm -hmm. But because they're so strong in our emotions, we believe that they are from God or we believe that they're it true. is fact. Yeah. yeah, it's truth. No questions about it because I feel so strongly about it. And I, we just have to be very careful with that. Be aware of the power that emotions can have on our lives, mm -hmm. which could affect negatively our you know relationships and blessings that God has put in our life. So then basically at that point we were able to surrender our emotions, mm -hmm. right? Really start to like let go of the emotions that were driving us mm -hmm. and influencing us and kind of come to a point of just letting go. <laughs> what? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> There's a sermon by Stephen Furtick, that's who did it, right? Mm -hmm. And he has this visual of building a fence. And basically, when you are offended by your significant other, you, you get handed this piece of wood. And over time, the devil wants to really dig in that piece of wood um, and create a fence between you and your significant other. We'll have the full sermon linked below so you guys can know what we're referencing. In relationship, it's really learning how to drop those offenses as fast as possible so i think that night we kind of just were like reasoning with each other like okay can we just let can it go we just let this one go just drop it <laughs> yeah let it go move on yep it's a little bit hard for me because i'm fine talking for hours but i really do want to feel loved by the end of the conversation and something god has been showing me is i don't necessarily need that love from kyle all the time I can have my love and reassurance from God until Kyle is ready because like he said, snap out of it and switch. flip a switch. And that makes me want to keep talking about it because I want to get back to that point of feeling loved and connected. Um, but God has been showing me that I don't necessarily need that because I get like God is my source. So that night I was like, you know what? I might not feel like he totally is in love with me and we're at like the best place, but we should just go to bed. So just drop it. Yeah. So that's what we did. Mm -hmm. I went home, we slept on it, came back the next morning. Mm -hmm. We had some breakfast. Yeah. And at that point we were able to really reflect on it without the emotions mm -hmm. um, and kind of dig a little deeper and figure out what was really going on and see the lessons that we were learning throughout it. Yeah. yeah. And that was when we came to the conclusion that next time I just need to listen and not really give solution or maybe just ask him, are you looking for a solution right now? Do you want to hear my opinion on it? Or, you know, do you just want me to listen and really just ask him in those moments? Like, what do you need? On my behalf is learning how to respond to her and how to speak to her the way that she needs to be spoken to mm -hmm. um, the way that she craves you know wants to be spoken to give her the love that she deserves even in those moments mm -hmm. where it's like regardless of how i'm feeling and, and what's going through my head remembering like the main thing keeping the main thing the main thing um, which is you know god and her you know my love for them and how important that is to me 
and even through the midst of that being able to come back and show that once you are self-aware of what you need it's so much easier to communicate to your significant other exactly what you need during those moments and if your significant other is on your team they should be willing to hear that and what kyle said he is striving to grow in that mm -hmm. because he loves me and he's on my team and he wants me to still feel loved during conflict hey i am editing the video you're watching i feel like this keeps happening but you know editing cayenne is a whole she's a vibe you know so here I am letting you guys know that I have no idea where the last clip went of us kind of wrapping things up and saying goodbye. So I just thought maybe me, myself, would suffice in saying goodbye. Because I don't have Kyle here, so he can't say goodbye to you. But I think he would want to say that he loves you so much and you were treasured by God. And that if you would like, you can subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. So we will see you guys very soon. Love you. Bye.